Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be doing our lineup construction video for the UFC, what's it, 305, um, from Perth, Australia. And we're going to be completely focusing on how to win the 200,000, or at least as much of it as possible, that's being offered in the UFC special uh, GPP. Um, for those of you that just want to see who the good plays are, you can access my previous video in this channel. Uh, back from Thursday, actually, was it yesterday? No, it was back from Wednesday. And my opinions on that haven't changed. I mean, the best plays are pretty easy to, well, they are pretty easy to come up with. There's a couple There's a couple of things that worry me a little bit. I may as well go over that a little bit. So, I mean, in addition to the big favorites, um, Duplicy is obviously just probably the, is the best play on the slate. But some of these underdogs, and these, these fighters with takedown upside do concern me a little bit, specifically the Ricardo uh, Hamos, who's on paper a good play. You know, he's, be going, he's going to be going for takedowns, and if he wins, it's probably going to be because he got takedowns. And likewise, uh, Walker uh, from the mid-range, who, you know, the heavyweight, who I guess just because of his last fight, I mean, he got four takedowns, so why wouldn't he try that again? And if he wins, he probably scores well, but it's not so easy. I mean, in this environment – where the referees are punishing takedowns and guys like Carl Williams who have a clear path to victory and take, to, you know, in wrestling just decide not to do it because they fear either repercussions from the fans, repercussions from the organization or repercussions from the judges. They, they opt for other, other avenues. Um, and, and even somebody like Gamrot who we talked about, it does concern me because remember when you, when you have, when you want to, play a guy because of his takedown upside, it's a parlay. You have to, number one, have them go for the takedowns, and then number two, have them have them win, you know? Uh, so, uh, Hamos ostensibly looks, I mean, on paper, looks like a great play. Walker looks like a great play, and uh, uh, Gamma look, look like great plays, but just not so easy when it comes to this, this new takedown environment. So, uh, that's my only caution as far as that goes. But aside from that, uh, we're going to focus on construction. There is going to be one theme throughout this, and this is not exactly, you know, the most analytical way of, of, of approaching a slate, but I kind of announced I was doing it anyway. Um, so just to kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? To, to hammer that home, I, I'm, I'm not going to play Israel Adesanya. I mean, I've, I've been playing MMA DFS for, what, four years now? And there's not been a single card where I wish I played Israel Adesanya. He just doesn't score. He doesn't score and he always gets home. I mean, I don't understand. I don't know why anybody would want to play him in DFS. Now, again, there are there are paths where he could, you know, get a good score, I guess. But considering that he's going to be owned and considering we're talking about range of outcomes here, there's just no reason to play him in this contest, like even a share. So I'm not going to be doing that. So it's just a question of, how I actually make that work. It, am I going to lock in Drickus Duplessis? It's probably not the worst idea in the world. I talked about that the other day. Um, I don't like to do things artificially, though. You know, I, I prefer to just kind of get to them with my normal process. But there's one other thing I, I could do to get me uh, uh, to get me off of any Adesanya exposure, which we're going to get to if I can figure out the correct way to do it. So the first thing we have to always, for those of you who've been watching this channel, kind of deal with is the uh, are the different ways that we rate these these lineups. So we built 5,000 lineups already. Uh, we're ranking them by top 150. We did have a minimum salary of 47.5. I usually don't even like to have any minimum salary, but I mean those these favorites are so likely to win that the big favorites that it's just so hard for any you know lineup to make optimal at 47.5 or below. That I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave it here at 47.5, um, and I doubt we're gonna get to that many lineups that leave you know a decent amount of money on the table because of that fact. We get Tom Nolan and Jack Jenkins and all the, all these guys like minus 800 or whatever. You, when you have something like that, it's just very unlikely that um, it's very unlikely that they um, that money that's left on the table to excess ends up making the optimal. So when we run these lineups, the first, and so few people realize this, the first setting that they default to in Saber Sim is this MMA default setting, which is the most aggressive setting that you can have. 
you know, you, again, you, you look through the, um, the, uh, the hourglass here, uh, the eyeglass to see what that means. MMA default, you see that you, they're, you're calculating based on the 99th percentile outcome of, of, of the lineup. Um, would they change this? No, I think it's the same. I do think it's the same, although I'll tell you, I am going to check previous notes because I something about this doesn't makes me feel it's a little bit different than the previous one. I'll know that because I changed it when I made my sheets default setting. Let's just see. And the only thing I changed was, yeah, so look what they did. So, I don't know. So few people picked this up. So the, the previous so so the previous formula was 0. 0.5 times the 95th. It was 99th, right? Because I changed this to 95th. 99th percentile outcome, and then they dinged it 0. 0.3 times the sum of, eject, uh, of uh, adjusted ownership. But now. What was it now? Now it's point, wait, now it's 0. 0.75 minus 0. 0.1. Hang on. And it was um, 0. 0.5 minus 0. 0.3. So they did change it. They gave you more of the 99th percentile outcome and they dinged it a little less for adjusted ownership. Ah, uh, so what I probably should do, if that's the case, is probably change this sheets default thing to the same thing. Um, I should instead, I'll do the same thing. I'll do 0.75. Wow, this is so weird. Am I going to change this? No, this is what we changed to 0.75, right? My projection sum, 0.5. So I got to change the 0.75 maybe. Okay, so I just want to make it a little less aggressive. And then we'll come down here. And instead of 0.3, let's just change this. Let's, you don't make it a little different. Let's make it 0.2. I wonder if they talk about this. I don't think anybody picked up on this. Okay, so I don't know if this means it's going to be more aggressive or less so. Huh. I got, I got to think about this. But nonetheless, you do want to play uh, some amount of your lineups from this setting. Um, and when I say this setting, I mean the MMA default setting and the Sheets default setting. Um, I think that because we're going to probably end up Xing out Izzy out of the, um, out of the, uh, the main builds, I don't think we need to go that crazy with the, with the amount of lineups we're getting from here. So I think probably 50, like the combination of, of, of sheets default and MMA default should probably equal about 50. So let's just do that. So let's put, well, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do 25 from the MMA default setting. We're just going to save it to the to 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 favorites, and then we'll go to sheets default setting. And we'll save another 25. Let's see what we get total. So they're they're actually pretty different, right? So 45 lineups are from this kind of weird setting, okay? Now, how much of this has Izzy? Uh, we're going to find out. Uh, we're going to find out in, in a little bit, okay? Uh, see, I don't care who we have. I'm not looking to see who we have. So we have 48 lineups, so 45 lineups so far. So next thing I want to do is I want to build the, 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 the other set. And I've been thinking about this. Let's 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 
let's talk about this. The main kind of GPP builds, oops, oops, uh oh, just happened. Come on, Eric. I hate when this happens. Let me pause this for a second. So it's not showing the lineups here, but they're but they're in. They're definitely in. Um, so let's uh the sim diversity 10 setting. That's the one that has kind of like the, the main. Well, instead of me saying what, what it is, let's take a look. MMA diversity 10 is 100 times. These are sim optimals. We just have the sum of my projection minus 0.2 average ownership. So it's not really factoring in the 95th percentile outcome or 99th percentile outcome. So that what makes it somewhat conservative. Um, uh, nonetheless, it still does carry with it uh, you know, some degree of upside. Um, the other thing you could do is run a contest sim. And, and here has been my problem with, with contest sims in, in MMA. Remember, if you're going to run a contest sim, the, the key is to get the field of lineups that you're comparing your set to to be as accurate as possible. Problem is, is there are so many sharp players now that are trying to get different and so many sharp players trying to get all these non-dupe lineups and leaving money on the table that to really predict what the field is going to do is extraordinarily difficult. So I, I almost feel as though it's, 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 we're not ready for that yet. I mean, honestly, I think that the field has kind of gotten ahead of the Sims with respect to figuring out what fields you, you're, you're supposed to compare your lineups to. That's kind of my working theory, at least right now. So for me, I, I kind of am down with just kind of going with these kind of pre-built kind of high upside lineups as long as you make a couple of little tweaks. Um, and, and the first of them is going to be Xing out uh, Izzy, okay? Um, there's two ways to do that. Number one, just X him out. And number two, you can just go 100% you know, duplicy. And, and, and I thought about doing it both ways. And, and on Thursday or whatever it was, Wednesday, I thought that I was going to just lock in Duplicy with the idea being that, you know what, I'll get all these other combinations. If Duplicy wins, he's going to freaking score a ton, right? And then if it gets to the main event and I am live for something really big with a Duplicy win, I'll just go bet a ton on uh, Izzy in the betting markets. Well, that that is definitely one way to do it. But but the other way is that if I'm particularly scared, not scared, of, of Duplicy not winning, Maybe I should just only play like 60% Duplicy or whatever, or whatever I do not get of Duplicy, I'll just make sure to fade Izzy. The idea being that if Izzy wins, the fight busts. But if Duplicy wins, the fight smashes. And about, you know, 50% of the time, the fight's going to smash, and 50% of the time, the fight's going to bust. So... I think that what I'm going to do is just kind of let this kind of dictate to me how much duplicy I get um, after Xing out Izzy. I imagine it's going to be a ton. Okay. Um, the only the only other thing I want to think about is whether to leave money on the table when I make this build. Okay. And he, here's here here's the issue. Okay. The issue is this. For those of you who have been following this channel, you I bet you know what I'm going to suggest, right? So so you have Duplicy at 7,900 and Izzy at, eight, at, at 8,300. You should probably just play Duplicy and leave 400 on the table in like all lineups um, because he is going to be popular. But maybe, just maybe, there will be enough people that play Duplicy with that extra $400 that it's worth doing. And, and then I started thinking, you know, maybe not, because it's not as if Izzy is even projecting higher than Duplicy. Like, if, if in most of the optimizers, if, they, if the optimizers build, like, all their lives throughout the, throughout the industry, and they're left with 8,300 left, are they really going to play Izzy with that 8,300? I, I guess I guess so, if the ownership is projected to be, like, 30%. 
Okay. So I, I talked through all this and I think I am going to leave 400 on the table. Okay. When I do this. So the idea is there's 45 lineups already. We're going to put 105 lineups in from the Sim Diversity 10 thing. But uh question is, is whether we do Min Uniques 1, Min Uniques 2. Um, but what we are going to do is limit the salary to 49600 in all of them. Okay. So let's... Um, Let's put 100 in, just like this, or actually 105, just like that. And again, it's cool. We don't even know who we have. We don't care. Um, and then what we have to do is we have the filter by salary. Uh, filter, add filter, show, and then salary less than 49,700, right? So we'll leave at least 400 on the table. Okay. okay. Um, so now we have 105. And now it's a question of whether we go min uniques one, min uniques two, whatever. Normally what I would do is uh, for other sports is I would look what the average projection is and see how much, you know, I cost myself by, 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 by tweaking it. But median projections mean so little in, uh, in MMA that I don't think I want to do that. Um, let's just see what happens. If I just start going min uniques two, you know, min uniques three, whatever it is. Okay. Oh, we didn't X out Izzy yet. Sorry about that. Min uniques one first. Let's X out Izzy first. Um, boom. Um, and then we'll go min uniques two, maybe. That should be enough, right? And we don't we don't need to. It's not even letting me. So we'll go min uniques two. And these 105 are going to be saved. Now let's just see if there are any dupes here. Let's see. Let's save these to the favorites. 148. All right, that that that's good enough. Okay. I'm gonna add one more. I'm gonna add like two more. Let's see if we get there. Yeah, so now we got 150, which is great. Okay, so this is what we're going to put in uh, into our 150. And there's one other thing that we have to do still. So let's uh, let's uh, save these to the contest. So let's go back to this, this, this uh, contest here. Go to favorites. Sorry about that. And then we will save these to the contest. And we're only worried about the um, the uh, the one, uh, this thing right now. So what we're gonna do next, okay? And this is, this is, this is whatever. We're gonna go into the, um, the DraftKings app and we are going to hit swap players. And what we are going to do is remember we made those 45 lineups that were sorted by MMA default sheets default. What we're going to do is we're going to go in there and we're going to find all the Izzy lineups. Wait, we don't have any? We don't have any anyway. We didn't get any Izzy lineups out of those. I just want to make sure of that before I do what I was going to do. Um, let's go back to, where was I? What was it, Bill 2? Uh, let me just make sure that, that we were getting no Izzy out of this, out of this build here. I X'd it out of here, but I really thought that I had some Izzy in that group of um, of MMA defaults. So I just want to just double check this. Because if I didn't, then great. 
Um, so I do have, it looks like I do have a couple of Izzy's in there. So what happened to those? Let's just see. Yeah, we do. We have, we have 19 lineups in. Okay. So let's, let's just make sure that we, uh, that we added those correctly. Um, into favorites, right? Let's make sure we do, we do have some Izzy's in here, right? Israel Adesanya, right? Okay. So we do have 19. Let's make sure that we add them correctly. Oh, because I didn't download them yet. Sorry. So this is what we're going to do. Sorry about that. It was my big reveal, my big, my big, my big move here. So now they're all in. And then what we're going to do is we are going to hit swap players. And every lineup with Adesanya in it, we are going to swap for duplicity. So what this done is added even more, leaving 400 on the table. But these are extra upside because they were built on this MMA default setting. Okay. So the only thing we have to look at uh, now is, let's just make sure we have no Adesanya. We still have some Adesanya. Why is that? Well, let's just go back again. Edit entries. Swap, swap players, Adesanya. We don't have any Adesanya. I don't think it updated yet. So we don't have any Adesanya. Let's just make sure of that. Great. So what we did was we swapped all of our duplices or Adesanyas for duplicy left an additional 400 on the table and away we go. So that is, that is what I think I'm going to do or something like it when I actually like do my projections again and all that stuff. So that is uh, not the usual thing, right? Uh, I don't usually play this way and take such a big stand. Now, what you'll notice is that there's one, two, there's like a bunch of lineups that are duped now. Okay. Because what it is, is, Probably some of those that I intentionally left 900, 400 on the table showed up twice. So I'll have to go in there and kind of manually change those. But I think this, I think these little processes that I kind of went over uh, really apply nicely to this slate. Um, it gets you a, you know, a ton of the guys you want and it gets you a little bit different by at least Xing out one guy that's going to be really, really high owned. All right. That's going to do it. Uh, good luck everybody tomorrow and uh, catch you next week.